electrons snap with each other and they snap into a crystal. However, if you inject, say, a boron atom into the crystal, then a boron atom has four electrons on its outer shell. But it fits in with the silicon atoms just fine, except it has it's holding one extra electron. You get it? So this is so if you inject boron, then you're making the silicon endoped, which means negative negatively doped. So you're giving it negative charge because it has an excess electron for every other atom. And this is to do what? Um, I'll tell you later. So this is, um, so, and now, so then it'll, so this will make the silicon repel electrons and it will not easily accept them. So any opportunity for it to move to a neutral or positively charged substance it will take that and the electron to remove. And then there and then you can P dope silicon, which is when you un inject a material. I forget exactly what material it is, but it's one with one with one one with one less electron. So it has two electrons in an outer shell and you inject it into the crystal. So in this way, it has uh, when you're talking about transistors in this case, you refer to them as electron holes. So there's an electron hole. And when there's a hole, that means that other electrons will move to fill in that hole. It'll make it positively charged because electrons want to fill in that hole. So when it gets an opportunity, so when another substance gets no, another, an, an opportunity, then it will, then an electron will move into that hole, but then there's a hole, but then when the electron left, there's then a hole there. So another electron has to move into it. You get it? You get it, basically? Uh -huh. And so, um, essentially the way a diode works is just uh, this principle, except you're taking one portion of N-doped silicon and putting it next to a portion of P-doped. So when you take a power source and try to run electricity through, um, starting with the p doped region, then it will try to occupy the p the um, holes in that region. I'll try to you know occupy the holes and um, I'm trying to think here. And eventually the uh, so remember I was talking about it's kind of like a relay. Are you recording me? because you keep holding the phone and you've been holding it like that for a long time. Right. I am. I need to lead it. So first. what is what is it you're doing? You're talking well, about a transistor? Well, I'll get to that in a later. Okay. Um, basically, and so remember I talked about the, the holes moving because the electrons keep trying to occupy those holes? Well, eventually those holes will move to the end region. Which make the and which make it so that it is, which make it possibly charged for a little bit so electricity can flow completely through. However, if you try to move electricity and start with the N region, then it won't go in that direction because it's like it's stubborn. So, like the so the positive won't want to have anything to do with the uh, negative region. And so that's a diode. So and it's useful because it only lets electricity flow in one direction, as I said. And um, uh, a transistor is the same thing, except it's uh, the ba the most commonly used transistor. I'm going to describe a bipolar junction transistor. 